everyone, Jane from Pandemonium Art Gallery here, and today we are going to paint a wine glass and a wine bottle. This is a really fun painting, and I think that um, painting the glass with the reflections looks really impressive. It's a very, very simple technique that's really effective. So get your canvas, brushes, paints, check out the description below for a full list of materials, and let's get started. So for this painting today, we're going to be using three different paint brushes. We're going to use the one inch flat brush for the background, the half inch angle brush, and a quarter inch angle brush. I'm also going to use a pencil leftover palette plate to help me draw my wine glass. You can use anything that has a round shape. You could even use a compass to draw the shape or you could just freehand it. The colors that I'm going to be using are titanium white, cadmium yellow deep hue, burnt umber, alizarin crimson, diox purple, and I'm also going to be using just a tiny bit of ultramarine blue and Mars black, but we'll be using them toward the end and so I'm not going to put them out on my plate because they'll dry out because I just am going to use a tiny little speck of each. I'm painting on a 16 by 20 inch stretched canvas again. And as always, you can use any size of canvas you like. So to start this painting out, we want to decide where all of our elements are going to be. So I know that I want my wine glass right about here, and I'm going to have the bottle coming out right about here. So those are my two main elements. And it doesn't matter where you choose to put them. So I'm going to have lighter, brighter spots where the wine glass and the bottle are going to be radiating out darker. And the technique that I'm going to use is very similar to the first technique in my smoky background video. And really you could use either one of those techniques with this background. So I've got my flat brush, I've wet it in my jar and wiped it off on the edge. So I'm going to load up my brush with the cadmium yellow. And I want this um, to be pretty bright so I'm going to add a good sized corner of white and then just a hint of brown so I have a consistent color throughout. Again, as always, I'm not worrying about blending these colors in. I'm only worrying about covering the canvas. And my brush strokes are pretty random. And remember, as always, when you press your brush flat, you get more paint. When you just use the tip of the brush, you blend paint together. So I'm kind of doing a mix here. I'll go back and forth with just the tip of the brush until it's not doing anything anymore, and then I'll press flat and get some more paint. I'm gonna pick up a little less yellow, a little less white, and a little more brown. I want it to be a fairly smooth transition. but I'm not too overly worried about it. And I'm gonna do that all the way around this circle's edge, slowly picking up more and more brown as I go. spot like this where it doesn't really blend together, you can always just grab a little bit of the color you're trying to blend it in with and feather over top of it and that will help. It's not the right color that you want. If it's not dark enough, just add a little bit more of your dark color until it is. If it's too dark, add a little more white or yellow, whatever you need. Right here, I felt like I wanted a little more yellow, so I just pushed a little harder on my brush and got off some of that yellow that's up here at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and do my other bright spot here now. And 
And this one, I'm gonna have it coming straight out of the corner since the, the wine bottle is gonna be protruding from the corner. So I'm gonna start it right there up against that edge. Here's our background. Now we're going to let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll start sketching out the wine glass and the bottle. Okay, we're going to start drawing our wine glass and I want it to sit right about in this area. So I'm going to use this old paint palette. All of this paint is dry. And I'm going to place it right about where I want my glass. Now, instead of just drawing the entire circle, I want to make sure that I leave a space for the opening. And I want the opening to sit right about like this so that it's pointing directly up at that top opposite corner. So I want it about that wide and about at that angle. So I'm just gonna keep that in mind when doing this part. So I've got my pencil and I'm just gonna very lightly trace around the edge of this plate. a little higher on this other side. Just a little bit. Okay. So I have my circle for my wine glass, but I don't want this wine glass to be a perfect circle. So the edges of my wine glass, I want to come up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is right about at a quarter of an inch off of each one of these, I'm gonna draw a straight line. So I'm going to start here and it's going to be roughly roughly an inch and a half long. And you can keep adjusting it. Don't be afraid of having pencil marks on here because this pencil will come off very easily. Now you can use a ruler or you can eyeball it or whatever. I'm just gonna use this old canvas board to draw a line from one of those corners to the other one. Typically, I would probably just eyeball this, but. The stem is gonna come right about out of the center of our glass. So right about, right about here. The important thing is that you make sure that you've got about a 90 degree angle right here. So a perfect square. You don't want it to be, you know, smaller on one side and larger on the other. Then your stem is gonna be crooked. So perfect 90 degree angle where it comes out. And I'm just eyeballing this, but you could use a ruler if you wanted to. Then the glass actually comes and curves in so that the stem is wider here at the top. So from about here we're going to draw kind of an arc and you can refine this as you go. Don't worry about it too much right now. Let me show you how to get rid of these extra pencil lines. I've got my background brush. It's cleaned off. It's just a little bit damp. 
and if I wipe over the edge of those pencil lines, they just come right off. Don't scrub at them too much because unless your background has had, you know, about 24 hours to cure, you may wipe some paint off. So I'm just lightly swiping over it. You can see that pencil line's gone. Same over here. draw our wine bottle and I'm not gonna have the entire wine bottle just a little bit of it and mostly the neck that's gonna be pouring the wine now there's any number of ways that you can do this for the most part I'm gonna just kind of eyeball and freehand the wine bottle um, you could use a ruler you could you know download a, an image of a wine bottle and cut it out and use the paper as a template whatever you want to do but I know I want the bottle to be about as wide as my hand. So I'm gonna put my hand right here where I want it and I'm just gonna make a little mark on each side. So that's about how wide and about the positioning I want my wine bottle. So now I'm just gonna kind of eyeball. Since this pencil comes off so easily, I don't really have to worry about it. And that's about as far out as I want my bottle itself to come. So I'm going to make a 90 degree angle here. Keep that fairly straight until it touches this line. And then the neck of my bottle is going to come out right about in the center. I'm going to widen that out, keeping those lines parallel. And then let's round off these corners. So kind of like we did on the stem of the glass. I'm not terribly worried about this because when I start painting it, I can refine it. A little bit right here just to soften that corner. And then here, the very top of the bottle is slightly wider than the rest of it. I'm gonna clean off some of these pencil lines. What we're gonna do now is just define where the wine is. So I've got my quarter inch angle brush and it's damp and wiped off on the edge of the jar. And I'm gonna come in and just grab a little bit of paint. I don't want a ton right now. I just wanna sketch with it. So inside of my wine glass, I wanna have a big kind of dramatic wave. And so I want the, the point of that wave to start right about dead center of my glass. So I'm going to take my angle brush and I'm going to use the point and I'm just going to make a dot right about there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's where my, the tip of my wave is going to be. So my wave is going to come up around, touch the glass, follow the shape of the glass back up and up to the bottle. don't have to be again we're just sketching it so it doesn't have to be perfect you don't have to be too terribly worried about it just bring it to your pencil line and then do the inside of the wave it's gonna be smaller than the outside and 
just gonna come up about to there. So I changed my shape a little bit. I just have my damp brush and I'm just gonna clean that off. Make sure that you do that real quickly if you decide to erase a paint line because remember, once it dries, that will not erase. All right, now our wine bottle, even though this wine bottle is gonna be green when we're done, we're still gonna paint the wine in it because if you look at a green wine bottle in real life, you can see the red wine through it. So I'm gonna get a little bit more of the red. And I kinda want a little bit of a, a wave in here that matches what's going on in here. So I'm just gonna draw a very small one. About like that. It's gonna come around like that. Now the wine is gonna come out of here and meet here. But rather than trying to draw both edges of it, keep it a nice shape and meet up with here, I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna make a line from the center of the bottle in kind of a shape that I like that comes down and meets about in the center of here. Now that I know exactly the direction that my wine is gonna go, I can come from the edge. Not, I don't know if you can see that because of the pencil, but the bottle being wider at the top, the edge of it is actually here. So I made my wine coming from inside of the bottle a little bit more. I'm gonna give it a slight undulation as it goes and meet up with that one. Same on this side. I'm starting inside the bottle just a little bit, leaving room for that fatter edge. Connect these two. And there's our wine. Moving on to our half inch angle brush. We are gonna start filling all of this in. So I'm gonna get quite a bit of paint. Now remember that red paint, almost all colors of red paint are quite a bit more transparent than other colors. So as you're filling this in, you're going to be able to see your background. And that's okay because wine has a little bit of transparency to it. Don't try and make this a solid color that you can't see any of the background through. Just get a preliminary coat of paint on it. We're gonna do a couple of coats. Use the chisel edge to draw around these edges here so that you get a nice crisp line. If you try and cut around that line on the edge like this, notice how it gets wider when I push. You might lose control of the tip of that brush and then go outside of your line. focusing on brush directionality here. You don't want to fill in this wine this way. You want all of your brush strokes because since it's transparent, you're going to be able to see those brush strokes. And if they all flow in the direction that the wine is moving, it's going to give it a little bit more of a realistic feel without you having to put in too much extra effort but if you paint against the direction that the wine is moving, you're gonna make it look flat. You're gonna see all those brush strokes and you're gonna have to work a little bit harder to get some dimension in there. All right. 
Now I'm gonna let this dry completely because when the paint is wet, when you try and add more layers to deepen it, you just end up pushing paint around and smearing it. So I'm gonna let it dry so that when I come back, I can easily lay another layer of red paint over this and it will deepen it and darken it rather than just moving it around. All right, let's do another coat. here I am covering all of it I'm trying to make it all a fairly solid color but as we move into the stream and the glass I'm gonna let parts of it remain a little bit more transparent because more light is gonna be able to come through this area than it would in the bottle so I'm gonna get some paint and I'm gonna go around this bottom edge mostly because I want this top edge to be a little bit more transparent. I'm just gonna smooth out the line in between them. See how it's darker here than here? It just makes the wine look a little bit more transparent. Now once we get into the glass, I'm gonna let this edge here and this edge here be more transparent than everything else. specifically focusing on this bottom edge here where the wine is going to be the deepest in the glass and the farthest away from the light source. So I'm using a very light pressure brush stroke. I've got plenty of paint but I'm really just using the tip of the brush and what that's going to do is lay the paint down but not really allow it to be scraped back off. So it'll be a little bit heavier. Once again, we're gonna let this dry. All right, one more coat. I'm gonna get quite a bit of this red. And I'm gonna come over here and get a hint of this Diox purple. Because now we're gonna add our shadows. So I'm gonna put these shadows right at the bottom here. between where that purple is and your lighter area. So see now, even though I put a little extra paint on top of this, the fact that this is so dark is making this look much more transparent and light. You can go ahead and get some spots really, really dark. As dark as you want. Make sure that you keep some red in that mixture so that the purple spreads nice and even. throughout the stream. So I just kind of made a little slash and then turned my brush flat and smoothed it out. And I'm not 
gonna fill up the entire back area here. Just a few. See how that purple in there is really deepening all of it and really popping out these lighter areas, making them more transparent. Up here on the bottle, we're gonna add some. I'm not too terribly worried about how or where because what we're gonna do to the bottle next is gonna make it pretty much irrelevant, but I do want some of it there just in case. And I think what I'm gonna do to the bottle next is probably gonna freak some of you out. But that's okay. It's good for you. I think that's probably about all I'm gonna do. Okay. Now, again, we're gonna let this dry completely. And then we're gonna come back, we're gonna finish up the bottle, finish up the glass, and we are almost done. Now we're gonna fill in the bottle so that it looks like a green bottle. And I have my tiny little drop of um, ultramarine blue and a little bit more gold. Now you could use green paint to do this. Um, if you were going to use green paint, I would use hooker's green. But the reason I'm gonna do it this way is because this yellow is much more transparent than Hooker's Green. And I want this bottle to be transparent. I wanna be able to see a little bit of this color in there. So I'm gonna come in, I've got my brush, it's wet. I just wiped it off on the edge of the jar. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this blue, not very much, and bring it over here and mix it in with my yellow, just until I get a green about what I want. Now, if I feel like it's too bright of a color, then I can always grab a tiny bit of this brown, that's kind of dried out, and mix it in there, and that'll just make it a little bit more drab. So I'm just gonna keep mixing until it's about the color I wanna see. And then in a fairly thin layer, I'm going to fill in my bottle. And I can refine the shape of the bottle as I go as well. And you might need to do a couple of coats on here. Keep your brush fairly damp. And make sure you get this little lip here. I decided to make it a little bit bigger than I had it. just to deepen up that bottle a bit. I'm gonna move down to my quarter inch angle brush to fill in this. I want this to be pretty solid. of the bottle. Be 
because the glass is thicker here, you wouldn't really see the wine as well through this part. black here and my angle brush. I'm just going to get a little bit and we're going to outline the glass right over our pencil. So remember the tip of this brush always drags and I'm not putting very much pressure on it so I get a nice thin line. I'm dragging my hand. That's going to help me get an even crisper line. I'm not moving my. I'm not moving my hand. I'm resting my hand on the canvas and then just dragging it. So it's not my wrist moving like that. It's my whole arm dragging across. cleaned off my brush and we're gonna add some highlights. Now when we add highlights onto the glass, we're gonna use this brush two different ways. We're gonna use the chisel edge and we're gonna use it flat. So first I'm gonna start with the flat edge. I'm gonna place it right there up against the edge and I'm just gonna lightly drag it down. Now the important thing here is that your brush stroke matches this line here. So you don't want this to be a straight up and down because that's not going to match here. That's not the way the light would be reflecting on it. If you're going to put a highlight here in the middle, this part is facing you so it wouldn't necessarily be seen as slanting one way or curving the other. It would be straight up and down here. Over here, again, it would follow the edge of the glass here. Down here, it would follow the edge of the glass that way. So just always take a hint from whatever the black line there is doing. That's what your highlight should be doing right there. I'm just going to add a few here. hard edge highlights. You can use a different kind of a brush. I kind of like it. Now you can add some of these highlights into the wine if you like. I've done it that way a few times and I didn't really like the way that it looked, so I'm not going to do it, but go ahead and try it. I'm going to re-outline this whole glass with white, but my goal is not to cover the black. It's just to give it a little bit Keep a damp brush handy so you can get rid of any of these lines that get away from you. See, I still want to be able to see that black. Okay, I'm going to add a couple of little highlights on the bottle itself, and then we're done. And still, we're gonna take a hint from the edge of the bottle.
Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you had a great time and I look forward to seeing all of your paintings. Again, you can post them to my Facebook page. The link for that is in the description below. You can email them to me or you can link them in the comments below here as well. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And I look forward to painting with all of you again very soon.